Hello everybody, welcome back to Grand Prix Manager 2. So last time we had a race where we had both our drivers finish in a points position and Baron Schneider getting second place, which was a big, big achievement for Zach Speed. As we see in the Drivers' Championship, Baron Schneider, sixth place in the championship, Gerhard Berger, ahead of his teammate Albrecht by 24 points and it's and Albrecht could still somehow still possibly beat um, Gerhard Berger but he would have to win a lot for the remaining races and Berger not score any but that is not going to happen in the constructors Sack Speed are in fifth place at the moment which is which again is a huge achievement we're we've got more points than Williams and we're beating Benetton and our rivals that were that a while ago was March. They've stuck on one point with Ligier. Minardi, Lewis, and Urban are the only team that's not got points. And Ferrari, um, just less than 60 points ahead of McLaren. I'm pretty sure McLaren can still actually beat that score, but I don't think there's a chance they're going to be able to do it though. Uh, Lotus, long gone. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're probably just going to have to sell third. Arrows in fourth, even though they've had quite an inconsistent season. So at least they've managed to get a good spot. But anyway, let's get on with the next race. It's at Monza. Okay, we are at Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. So let's get Skinzi and Schneider out there. And hopefully get some hopefully decent laps. I mean, we're not exactly going to be very competitive against the big teams, I say that a lot in practice, and it's usually true, but in qualifying, we usually make the, we are, do quite well in that. 127 from Ginzi, Schneider is 130, and Ginzi is about, is about over a second quicker than Gerhard Berger, and Schneider is, well, quite far away. Uh, yeah, Schneider, two seconds behind Alvaretto which is pretty much Gerhard Berger's teammate and championship rival, and that's about it. It's like Michael Schumacher and Barrichello, <laughs> in a way. Uh, but Boatson at least is slower, but this is like Ferrari's home Grand Prix, so it's like right up Ferrari's str stride to win this. I mean, three seconds get gap between them and Benetton. French says about the pace of Ferrari at Monza. Anyway, let's get on with the qualifying session and do or die, since it really matters. Someone else has crashed, and that's Nini, uh, but Genzi's still the quickest driver out there. So that's good to see, and we're going to end the session here and see where will we start. <laughs> I love a cup of tea. Anyway, we're, we, we start first and third, and Adrian Campos, Renny on you, and Philippe Elliott will not be taking part. Where is Winklehawk from March? He's in 8th place, his teammate's down on 11th, so Winklehawk's actually been quite a surpri surprise here. But anyway, let's check the grid. Gibbs is on pole, Gerhard Berger 2nd, Schneider's 3rd, Albrecht 4th, then both McLarens, then PK, Winklehawk's in 8th, Nigel Mansell's up to 9th, Nakajima 10th, Goldman 11th, both Benetton's, Derek Warwick, Palmer, both Euro Bruns, A. Cheever, Julian Bailey, Patrice, Dalmas, Parasal and Johansson surprisingly is at the back of the grid. Okay, we are ready to go, and in the formation lap, no one's still in their car, so that's good. So Schneider and Ginzi will still stay first and third. It would be funny if Gerhard Berger stole his car, that would be quite funny. <laughs> the championship leader still in the car. Anyway, the Italian Grand Prix is ready to go now. Salah stole his car, so Salah, who starts at the back of the grid, he's gone. And that's not the right button, and we'll go here. And 22 cars, so uh, Stefan Johansson's gone missing. I'm not really sure why. Maybe they, maybe Ligier ran out of cars that they could use. Okay, we've got Alberetto from Ferrari who's already retired from the race. I was about to say Nakajima's come to the pits on lap 10, so he must be doing a three-stop strategy, and so is me. But Alberetto retiring, that's actually quite a huge deal. Uh, Senna's in 4th, PK 5th, and 6th place Winklehawk in the marches in the points, and Alessandro Nanini is retired, so Winklehawk is doing very well, even though he's only a temporary replacement for um, Capelli, and Bailey is also retired. I mean, Julian ba Bailey's not been doing well, I mean, Jonathan Palmer 
and has been struggling. He's the only, he's the only reason why Terra's got points at all. And here comes Ginsey to the pits. 19 laps worth of fuel. And 9.4 seconds. Okay, he's in the pits. But where's he going to come out? He's going to come out in. He's still in the lead. Garrett Berger is... is oh, Garrett Berger is in the pits with him. Uh, Mundina's retired. Uh, oh, cannot remove fuel. I didn't want to remove fuel. I wanted to add fuel. Whoops. Right, 9.6 seconds. Schneider's going to the pits. That's Senna. That's going to pass him, it looks like. Oh, I say that. No, Schneider's actually stayed ahead of Senna just. Alright, that's cool. well, well done to Ryan Schneider there. But can he do that again the second turn? And Ginzi has just retired. Right, so Burgess now just been handed the lead because of that. A Cheever is retired. And so is Dalmas. Right, so the race leader is gone. And that happened to be Ginzi. But we're still Schneider in second place, so can Schneider get second place again? Winklehawk's in fifth place it's ahead of Prost. Wow, Winklehawk is actually doing very, very well for March. Alright, here comes Bernd Schneider for what for his last stop. And hopefully he will maintain second place. I'm not too hopeful about it though. Especially Senna and Prost is right there. I think they're gonna pass him. Uh Bernd Schneider has come out in third, so Senna has in fact got past Schneider, but but Prost actually hasn't, so the possibility of a podium finish for Zach Speed is, is still likely to happen, but I could be wrong with it. Uh, Alien Prost has come out back into the pit, so he's definitely done a 3 -sort strategy. He's now down to ninth. And oh no, he's jumped back to fifth. He's got ahead of Goldman, who's in sixth of the march. Driver has actually managed to get a point into the point position. Winklehog was in a point position for a while, and now he's down to eight, which is unfortunate because he's been doing so well. And Bernd Schneider has retired with very few laps left to go. Uh, that's not gr that's not a good way to go. With just about with less than ten laps to go, and ending up retiring from the race. So Gerhard Berger is going to win the race, Senna's going to come, uh, I think Senna's Sen Sen coming to the pits, is he going to stay second? Uh, yes, I think he's going to stay in second, Nelson Piquet's third, uh, fourth is going to be Prost, Goldman's going to come in fifth, Boatson is going to finish in sixth, so Benetton's at least got one point out of this. And Gerhard Berger is coming to the pits again, but he's so far ahead, he could just pit as long as he wants, and there you go. Berger from Senna from Piquet, why are both our guys go? Okay, they both spun off on this occasion. Great. Uh, Bernd Schneider's now tied 6th place with Boatson and Zach and Ginzi's in 13th. In the Constructors, we're still in 5th, we're still 5th. One point ahead of Benetton now, so Benetton are closing in a bit. And we need to get a new chassis because it's been, one's been ruined. Turbo's now level 2. Uh, car chassis, we've got 10,000 dollars at least because of... A pole possession we got. Suspension can only only up to Lamex race can be used. Okay, so they've restricted the use of suspension. Zaxby has lost our we've lost our EMS. And changing the rules. Failed to turn pole possession to points. And Gerhard Berger, six races in a row. Yeah, he's definitely won the construct the driver's championship and been the sole reason why he's won the um to win the constructors for Ferrari. There's no uh, two ways about it. Do we have a suspension that's in breach of the rules? No, we don't. Let's look at another team. Let's look at... Ligier. They've got a better gearbox than us, and a better cooling system, so... Let's go... Let's nick their gearbox. Cause, because since it's been causing a few problems on certain occasions. Go to Ligier. Yep. So let's try and get their gearbox. The 25. Yes, we got their gearbox now. So, okay, it's actually it's actually one kilogram lighter also, which is always a bonus. So we'll take that and we we'll head off to the Portuguese Grand Prix at Estoril. What's the time going to be? Gint is a 124. Schneider is a 126. Alberto is. Wow, nearly three seconds quicker. That's quite worrying. They that quick. 127 Schneider, 125. 
Okay. Gerd Berger is still at 121 though, so he's very, very quick on this track. Yeah. Benton and Ferrari are both very, very quick on the track. We are very slow, so I'm actually concerned about even making the 107%, let alone uh, getting a point position for the race. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not really feeling too confident, but we're going to give it a go anyway and just hope for the best. So, thing Ginzi out. Okay, that's okay. The results definitely a lot better than I expected. We're second and fourth still, so. We went from very slow to suddenly um, having potential of being quick. Uh, it, everyone's qualified for the for the race. Campos, Lurie, and Arnie are at the back. Jeez. Anyway, it's Gerhard Berger and Polden, Ginzi, Alperel, Serge, Schneider's in fourth, Nigel Mansell fifth, both Benetton, both Lotuses are far down, Chivas tenth, Prost and Senna are way down, Derek Warwick 13th, both Marches, Jonathan Power, Paris Sala, Patrice down 18th, Julian Bailey, Johansson's 20th, Medina, both LaRusses, Arnu, LaRuri and Adrian Campos is at the back of the grid. Okay, the Portuguese Grand Prix is ready to go. No one stalls their car this time round. Anyway, the Portuguese Grand Prix is ready to go now. No one stalling the car. It seems we're still second and fourth. Let's make sense by doing the TV camera here. Okay, all 26 cars are are there. And Stefan Johansson has retired before the first lap is done. And not a good start for Ligia, as well as Perez, Salah and Bailey have been penalised, so they're at the back. That destroyed their races for Minardi and Tyrrell. Okay, Alboreto has actually overtaken Ginzi, so full Ferraris at the front. Then it's both Saxby's and Nigel Mansell, then both Benetton's. Um, Arnu's retired for Ligier, so that's not good. Dalmas is retired. Perisal's retired, so... Oh dear. Retirement's coming in thick and fast already. And Philip Alley is now just retired, so both LaRusse's and both Ligier's are gone. Now here's the weird thing here. Nigel Mansell on the Williams is 5th, his teammate is 17th. Ricardo Patrice is very, very slow at this game, especially since he's on the same team as uh, one of Britain's greatest drivers. Well, of all time. Well, Nigel Mansell. Well, I'm just going back more. Going, I'm, start, I'm just starting to have second thoughts if it's even true or not. <laughs> if it's not, I apologise. If it is, then I still apologise anyway. Uh, Goldman uh, for March. So March is pretty much a rival, but so is Benetton's now a big, even bigger rival. Boats is down 16th. Nanini is in the points right now. But so far we're still second. We're still third and fourth. That's not too bad at all. Uh, Ginzi's coming to the pits in lap 23, so Schneider's going to attempt to pass them. And then Schneider's probably going to, well, be quicker than him coming out of the pits, as it seems to always happen. Okay, Nelson Piquet is actually just overtaking Schneider, so that's a bit of a concern that Piquet is outpacing him. Now, Ginzi's coming to the pits, so he seems to just drop down the order there. But I guess a lot of people are coming to the pits the same lap as him, as remember the same spot as him. Now, where is Ginzi going to come out? He's intense right now, so a lot of drivers have definitely passed him. I assume they haven't pitted yet, but there's still a lot of cars that have overtaken him in a short period of time. 9.3 seconds there, Schneider. Oh dear. Schneider's definitely going to drop down the order. He's in ninth, so he's actually stayed ahead of Ginzi again. How did Schneider do that? And I've just noticed Alberto is in fact just overtaking Gerhard Berger. So the championship leader has been passed by his own teammates, so good on Alberetta there to try and break Berger's um, winning streak. He's won, what, six races in a row? So a ridiculously high number. And Nanini and the Bet is in third. How's, how did Nanini uh, get third place? And Nigel Mantle's got past Ginzi. Oh, great. Okay, drives coming to the pet. Skinzy's been passed by Prost also. Prost is all the way down 11th. I didn't even notice he was so far down the field. But here comes Skinzy. No, is it going to be Skinzy or is it going to be Schneider? It's going to be Skinzy coming to the pets first, and then it's Schneider that it will be. Uh, no point really looking out where he's going to come out. He's, he's probably just going to drop down the order. 
a lot. So just gotta get to the end of the race. We're not we're not gonna score any points. And it seems our rivals Benetton are, so that's a bit disappointing. But Schneider seems to still be in ninth, which is interesting enough. Ginzi is now only down to thirteenth, so he didn't lose that much. I guess that's something. And Nigel Mansell's just got past. And I say that Nigel Mansell, Jonathan Palmer have both retired. So Ginzi's going to gain a couple of possessions. Alien Prost is overtaking Schneider, so oh dear. Alboreto in the Ferrari has just retired. Now that is, that's big. That is very big. And who else retired? Oh, it's only Andrew and Campos. Oh well. But that's quite big that Alboreto has just retired from the race. Because that's going to extend Berger's lead. Alessandro Nanini is going to get score big for Benetton. Both is going to get some points. So they're going to uh, trash us in the, point, in the constructors points now. Not the result we wanted to see, but that's exactly what's going to happen. And he's coming to pets, and he's just dropped down in possession thanks to Senna going past him. And Ayrton Senna just retired, but he still got second. But anyway, Gerhard Berger from Senna from, surprisingly, Alessandro Nanini. Okay, Senna actually ran a field, but he still completes. He still got second place, though. Benetton got third and fourth, so they've got, they got big. They scored big this race. Uh, Schneider's seventh, Ginzi's fourteenth in the in the drivers championship. We've dropped down to six because Benetton have now got six points ahead of us in the constructors. And uh, Turbo is now at level three, which is good. Uh, car chassis, and oh, another change to the rules: EMS steering system and airbox. Eurobrand Luther steering system. And FBI changed the rules. Dominic with Berger. He's now won seven races. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jerez. We've got no setup for that. Okay, we're definitely not going to score any points. And it's mixed conditions also. So maybe it might come to our aid. No sun change of weather. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. But we'll just see what happens. But I'm not expecting... Much grace from the weather. 28, 30. Okay, but more than two seconds quicker than us, Berger is. We're definitely going to struggle this qualifying session for this track. I don't really want to see the results because I know it's bad. I just know it's going to be bad. This is in the result, the qualifying, so we'll just see what happens. And. Okay. Okay, we've got a couple of surprises here. Patrice in the Williams is not taking part. Campos will not be taking part. And René Arnie is not taking part either. But we're starting third and seventh. Okay. That's actually gone a lot better than I expected it to be. Anyway, it's both Ferraris. Ginzi's in third. Nakajima fourth. Both McLarens. Then Schneider. And uh, Boatson, PK, Nanini, both marches, Mansell, Palmer, both arrows, Bailey, Mundina, Dalmas, Lurui, Elliot, Johansson, and Perez Salas at the back of the grid. Okay. Just gonna hope for the best here. And Winklehawk has stole this car. Oh the March star is doing well and it's just started to rain and we've got dry tires on. Right. Turn to the pits, both of them. Can we turn to the pits during the formation lap? No, but I'm told them to come back to the pits. Just to change their tyres as soon as possible. But anyway, the Spanish Grand Prix is ready to go. Now, no one's stalling their car. Come back to the pits. Come back to the pits. We're going to be, we're going to pretty much going to be at the back of the grid, but to be honest, it's kind of expected. 4.8 seconds. And Alvarez bringing the car from that rec the race lap record. I don't know how he's done that. So we're set up. Okay. Check here. Um, okay, we're ninth and tenth. Okay, I was expecting to be round at the back. I didn't really see anyone else pitting, but I just speeded it up quite a lot. But ninth and eleventh. Okay. Stuff. With, something we can work with. Okay, Schneider's retired, but so is Boltson. Okay, 
So Boltzmann returns something, uh, Goldman's retired, so Gins is intense. But being Jerez, where I'm expecting Ginzi to just retire and yep, he has just done that. And Nakajima has retired, so Nakajima was was running in sixth place and so now he's just retired. Let's put Nanini in the points position. Now I know there's not a lot of there's been a huge jump from the uh, both our drivers retiring to Nakajima's retiring. That's because this the the race has just been absolutely boring because Throughout the entire race, there has been literally nothing that's going on. It's going to be Bargo who's won it from Alberto, then it's both McLaren, and so Nelson Piquet, and the final point is going to go to Nanini. But the problem with this race is it was just there was just very very boring. There was just absolutely nothing to commentate on until Nakajima's sudden retirement. But before that, there was just nothing to talk about, and so it's going to be a Ferrari one two. Then it's going to be both McLarens, then Nelson Piquet in the Lotus, and Alessandro Nanini is going to finish in 6th place. So, I'm just kind of glad it's over because it was just standing, standing there watching it. It was just so dull, and we had a gearbox problem and electronics failure. Okay, 7th uh, and 14th in the Drivers' Championship. Uh, we're, we're, still, we're in 6th in the Constructors still because Williams... And everyone else below us didn't really didn't do well. I mean, March in eighth now. I didn't notice. Uh, Ligier is the only driver with one point. Minardi, Larus, and Yurbrun still got no points. Turbo still level three, and we had so a chance of gearbox failure, so that's completely ruined the rate, ruined the races. Poor weather. Saxby's lost the airbox. Saxby doing better. Well, overall we are, but in these last few races we've been having problems. One, two for Ferrari and Parga eight races in a row. Good grief! Now we have only two races to go, and that's Japan and uh, the Australian Grand Prix. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope we can end the se the se the first season of the 1988 mod on a high. And next season, hopefully, with uh, our new drivers that are Ginzi, Dumfries, and Berg. Hopefully, we will have a more successful season than what we've had so far. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye! Norman, next.